So mo morning, everyone, and thanks for making it. Like you know, and uh, as you notice, I'm not Marlon Pierce here, and this talk uh, was supposed to be by Marlon Pierce, and who couldn't um, make it to the conference in the last minute, so I'm proxying for him. So the slide script and all the abstract is from him. So, so some of these slides, um, I might be looking at them for the first time as you guys are. So let's all read together and then like you know, try to parse them through. So, and if there are anything questions I cannot answer, like you know, I can get back the right interpretation from Marlon. And also, it's it's my chance to interpret it differently the way I like, like you know, more than like you know what what Marlon wanted to say here. Again, um, again, like briefly chatting with Michael, I was saying like you know, yeah, the idea of the project looks interesting. I wanted to check it out, but. Just to clarify up front, like, you know, yeah, we have a few talks actually which, where Airavata will be mentioned or at least uh, in the related talks. Um, I don't think so. We have a talk per se on what Airavata is about. Like, you know, there's one talk actually at 3 o'clock by Chetri on the thrift interfaces. That might cover most of the technical details. But again, in this, this particular talk, what Marlon wanted to talk here was more about the community aspects itself and not the projects. And more importantly, like, you know, here, if you look at the title, like you know, building an uh, ecosystem as Airavata, like you know, as it stands, and it's trying to go towards building like a multi-tenanted hosted elastic services. So, in that, like you know, how can we take advantage of the existing Apache projects in this space, and more importantly, how can we engage uh, the core? Uh, the theme of the talk is more uh, mostly how can we engage others, uh, how can we benefit from them, how can we contribute, and more importantly, how can we take participation from others is a key theme. So, um, going on, I guess, um, yeah, you should be able to find the website. I, I just realized uh, uh, do not have the project URL here, but if you Google for Apache Airavata, like, you, know, you should be find it. It's airavata.apache.org. Again, the key takeaway here, like, you know, as Marlon trying to list here is, like, you know, we've been, uh, so in generally, like, you know, most of the Apache projects you see, like, you know, you, when you're trying to contribute as an ad hoc contributor, like, you know, you're generally, uh, the best mechanism to follow the project is the development mailing list, the dev mailing list. But in general, like, you know, especially if you're a casual worker, like, you know, following the, uh, the dev mailing list is like almost like drinking from a fire hose. So, and uh, that turns off lots of people, especially, like, you know, I'm here, like, I'm generally interested in general what you guys are doing, but, uh, it, it's too much overwhelming for me. Like, you know, that kind of motivated us. Like, you know, we'll go into more detail on on these aspects, but motivated us to create a architecture mailing list for say, like, you know, mainly to attract, like, uh, again, as a theme of the talk on uh, on going from elastic services and trying to take advantage of lots of other Apache projects and other open source projects. So, I strongly encourage you to check this uh, check out the mailing list, and we'll uh, come back more in the end. Uh, uh, kind of illustrating what's happening in there right now, and then like how can we help more uh, there? So, to start with um, again. Uh, the point of the slide is not just like to uh, give a big list of the Apache uh, Airavata current project management committee and committers. Like you know, you'll be able to find this uh, from the website. But the most uh, important, like you know, things to notice here is like you know, we have like you know, we should have added affiliations and so on. Like you know. Here, but uh, we had a mix. Of, we have a mix of hybrid people here. One, like you know, most some of them former. So, uh, by the way, like uh, to mention, like you know, is an dominantly like you know contributed from an academic research project, and like you know, it that just slowly uh, made its way into the Apache. We'll talk about that history a little bit here. So from that uh, pedigree, like you know, we have like some students who've been former students now who moved on to industry, like you know. Doing other things uh, in various startups and like I, I like from IBM Research to Witness, like you know, in Dish Network. So you'll see a lot of um, diversity here on what people are doing after graduation. But like you know, one of the important takeaway was how can we engage all of them? Like you know, after they have left the project or, uh, or as a day job, as their full time, they are not worrying about this project. And then um, the other part is. We had mentors like during incubation, like you know, when the project was incubating, like you know, like Chris Matman joined on board when we proposed the project on the incubator, saying this is interesting, this is something related to what I do in NASA JPL and other projects in Apache I work on. And like you know, let me come mentor you guys and then like you know try to engage there. And there's also this is only a smaller set of the uh, the contributors, I mean, like these are actually PMC and community, but 
and many Apache projects as very fun contributions include everything like from casual mailing list discussion to everything. So we have a lot of era architecture mailing list contributors here, not listed here. So it's it's a very interesting like you know what we found out like you know how can we like you know engage back like you know all of these students including these architects uh, who've been like you know doing architecting interesting stuff out there and bring back their experiences and so as the Google Summer of Code students like you know um, and who worked with Airavata as an example like you know over summer and then they go back busy back to their academic schedules or move to the full time jobs like you know how can we keep them engaged and uh, alumni members and so on. So the key thing is, like you know, we like you know, coming from um, the like you know, through the incubation route into the Apache, we have seen like you know, the mentoring like you know is greatly beneficial. Like you know, it may not be technical mentoring itself in the, per se here. Like you know, mainly during the incubation, like what you will get is a lot of mentoring on the the build systems, like you know, legal uh, aspects and so on and. Actually, I'm um, giving a talk on this related subject um, on like you know how can projects get mentoring and like you know how do we in the community track like you know later in the afternoon at two o'clock. But uh, here, like you know, we are like looking at it uh, mentoring in two parts. The general mentoring we get from mentors and so on, like with the legal aspects, build aspects, engaging the community aspects, like you know, growing the projects uh, into other spaces and so on technical mentoring as well. So the focus mainly like you know, here we'll focus on is the technical uh, mentoring aspects. So, uh, so the, the key thing what motivated us was the architecture mailing list as I was uh, trying to say like you know, we've uh, got this like request from few of folks like you know, yeah, we are trying to contribute to the project but it's too much to consume and like you know, I only have a few hours a week to spend, like, you know, over the weekend I want to casually contribute back, like, I find it very interesting. Um, and I, I also see that I can, when I look at other Apache projects and other things, I can see how Airavata can benefit on them. I want to contribute those kind of ideas, but, like, you know, um, how can I contribute, um, like, how can I follow the, uh, the project and contribute that is the kind of key. So the main thing is, I wrote that, like, you know, which, like, you know, which we'll dive into now on, like, you know, understanding the project a little bit to show that, like, you know, why we need, like, this kind of technical, why we need this collective wisdom. The main thing is, um, of course, like, you know, as an industry or other startups, like, you know, being an academic-driven project, like, you know, the project didn't have the luxury of, like, you know, 20, 30 developers working on a problem, but, like, you know, a handful of developers, like, you know, trying to balance their academic goal, and then few, few full-time staff, like, meeting both the operational deployments and as well as like you know doing interesting stuff so how can we uh, leverage all this like you know wisdom out from our from our contributors and then like you know engage back like you know was the key thing so yeah so before like you know we get back onto the topic on like you know um, <clears> on <throat> the architecture list like you know looking at briefly at what airavata is mainly about uh, and uh, at least like what it currently uh, does so before that like you know Briefly uh, looking into the space, like you know what, Airavata is like. This is a common term, like you know here cyber infrastructure. I'll not not read through the definition here. Uh, uh, here, like this from a National Science Foundation quotation, like you know, the person Craig Stewart seems to be like you know, uh, happens to be my boss, like one of my grand bosses at, uh, at uh, the University of Indiana University. But this is mainly because uh, his with his NSF role, like you know, he helped define this term cyber infrastructure. So in the same similar term, like you know, you'll see in uh, Europe, mostly in Europe, use it as e-signs, or in general, broadly used as digital services and so on. But in general, like you know, uh, cyber infrastructure, like you know, whenever we say cyber infrastructure, it includes like basically integrating all of um, primarily research systems, I should say. But like you know, nowadays, like you know, we include all the commercial clouds and uh, the commercial networks as well. But primarily, how can we link? Everything like from instruments, like you know, where from various instruments through networks to computational resources, uh, various kinds like you know, data intensive resources, high throughput computing ones, like high performance computing uh, ones, and data intensive uh, resources, and all of them into an integrated environment, where, which otherwise, like you know, is overwhelming or not otherwise possible. But the end goal was. And goal behind all this vision of, of cyber infrastructure, especially from the U.S. Um, National Science Foundation, is to create a research environment which is all integrated for a scientist to just take advantage of, uh, of a unified environment as opposed to ad hoc pieces across it. 
in a key portion, like you know, where like you know, most of us get our funding for our day jobs, um, and like you know, where we we draw lots of our experience uh, in uh, in applying and as well as building Airavata is a project called Exceed. It stands for Extreme Science and Engineering Discovery Environment. So in in short, like you know, the Exceed vision is to create a unified uh, the environment for a scientist to scale out all the way from his laptop to uh, various resources, which may include the computational resources like, you know, powered by Exceed itself, like, you know, which you will see, uh, you're seeing uh, kind of on this map here, um, all the way from Cornell through the Pittsburgh, and then, um, you know, so various supercomputing centers essentially primarily uh, situated across all of this. Um, uh, globally uh, spread out universities and integrate them back and then also integrate, uh, help the, the scientific community scale out from their laptop to their campus resources to this national infrastructure and through commercial cloud for on-demand computing and so on. And Exceed, like, you know, is also part of, uh, of NSF, National Science Foundation's vision of extreme digital, which also includes uh, other um, U.S. Uh, flagship infrastructure, including Open Science Grid, uh, which primarily uh, focuses on high throughput computing and uh, kind of the cycle scavenging idea of uh, utilizing all the ideal cycles in various classroom um, and instructional lab labs across the campus, and then some dedicated resources and so on. So the mainly Exceed here is an infrastructure project, but not so much of hardware. Like the hardware is independently funded by in this case, primarily NSF, but uh, in other cases, the De Department of Energy, NASA, and so on. And Exceed is a software layer which integrates um, all of them and then like, you know, provides a uniform access to the scientific community and integrating their data and computational resources. Yeah, and feel free to interrupt me. Like, you, know, you don't need to, if you have any questions or comments, you don't need to hold off until the end. So, so what uh, one of the things like you know, where we particularly focus in Exceed is a program called Science Gateways. Here's an example like you know, actually uh, it should use more um, again as we lead into the discussion session like you know, we'll go into more details like you know, if, if any particular topic is of interest here but like you know, here this is an example like if this little bit overwhelming slide here not so much um, is conveyed but like you know the, the key thing is this ultrascan is a science gateway, like you know, uh, mainly used by your biophysicists. Uh, they are looking at, like you know, say, uh, the, the particle macro macromolecular properties. They are trying to figure it out. The uh, like you know, they, there are various ways, like you know, how the structure of the properties and the properties, like you know, themselves, like evaluated. And this one approach, a set of scientists use a, a device called ultracentrifuge. Basically, ultracentrifuge uh, device goes with a pattern, like you know, you put a a sample in it and spin it at great length, like a uh, very high speed. The machine itself looks like a washing machine, but I'm sure, like, you know, if you put anything in it, it will tear into pieces because the whole thing is, like, you know, uh, spin it at great speeds and then, like, you know, separate out the various properties, the particles as they are sedimenting with different, like, you know, um, uh, they have different sedimentation properties. So look at them, and then the scientists, like, you know, basically the role of this gateway and where exceed comes into picture is. The scientific um, instruments, like many of them, like they give uh, experimental data, but they don't by themselves like provide analysis tool. So ultrasound, ultrascan uh, gateway came to prominence when its PIs um, Boris Dermler and Embry Brooks, like you know, kind of wrote some unique, uh, uh, basically algorithm to analyze the data which is coming off from this instrument. So uh, they study this, like they apply, they they get the data. They help, like, you know, uh, doing uh, various, like, you know, interactive visualization of the data sets. Um, and then, like, the, the <coughs> actually, we can go on to a live demo, like, you know, if it's of interest. But basically, it's very interesting project, like, you know, where, like, the, the users, like, you know, look at the, uh, the data set itself, like, reduces the noise level. And then uh, they, uh, they specify all the analysis, what they need to do, like, mainly like an emulation program. They don't. Before they do the like you know very computer uh, intensive simulation, they take the kind of the first guess by looking at the data set by visual observation, and then like you know they uh, launch this forecast like you know and then they say uh, the, which basically sets up their uh, stage for their simulation, and then like you know now you simulate uh, the same data sets on uh, uh, this uh, large scale exceed supercomputing resources. And then, like you know, and then like the users, like based on the data sets, and then based on the particles, like you know, the, 
they are studying, they apply various algorithms, like all the way from, like in the simplest one, they apply a two-dimensional spectrum analysis to look at like uh, the variations to like, you know, they, uh, they go through the more uh, complicated search space pa patterns into using genetic algorithms and uh, Monte Carlo analysis and so on. Primarily nonlinear negatively square equations, and that's where like, you know, they really cut some breakthrough on the, on the analysis aspect. But in short, like, you know, the gateway, like, you know, this provides the user all the way going from the data sets, like providing tools to understand the data sets and then analyzing these data sets on these computational resources. And then uh, the gateway also absorbs the use, the, uh, the process of getting allocations on various supercomputing centers, like, you know, running job, moving data, and so on. The user is just, like, you know, uh, sitting on his data set. And then the interface is like you know provi providing the scale out, scale in, making the scientists focus on this aspect. So where um, uh, the Airavata comes into the picture is like you know, there are like lots such gateways, like you know, each gateway focusing on a particular domain, such a domain science problem. Um, initial like you know one like an you know, example just to look through the chart is Cypress is a phylogenetic trees gateway, like you know helping analyze. Uh, the origins of various uh, species, um, and then like you know, neuroscience is like an assimilation gateway, like understanding the neurons and like you know their interactions, and then uh, talked about ultrascan. Paramchem is, uh, is a gateway, like you know, which is looking at um, how to like you know calculate the structural properties, the bond angles in a force field in a various molecular. So when and uh, we can like you know visually uh, get the uh, optical structures, but like uh, let's figure out the dynamic characteristics of the bond angles, like you know, and then various uh, uh, mainly caused by force fields. In this particular case, they were looking at dihedral force field optimizations, uh, how they impact, like you know, when two particles bond, and then like you know that one that's the core level of what they provide, and then the applications they use uh, they are used in drug discovery by pharmaceutical companies, like uh, figuring out like you know how two uh, particular drug interactions happen. Uh, with uh, various molecule, and then going down, like you know, basically there are all these gateways. So basically, what these gateways are doing is they are providing from the data-centric view or a resource-centric, computational-centric view to a science-centric view to the scientist. So the scientists themselves, like you know, don't have to worry about here's my data. Like you know, is, should I put a MapReduce job on it? Like you know, how do I analyze this? Like you know, is it more fit for an MPI? Is it a simulation program? Uh, should I apply a partial differential equation? That's kind of details to like, you know, what really the science he's doing. Like, let them focus on these gateways themselves, basically provide that abstraction away, taking away all the details of these uh, mathematical and physical uh, aspects of the models, and then like, let them focus on the science. And now if you look down further, like now these gateways like, you know, are there like, you know, trying to uh, face a lot of challenge. They are addressing the science needs as well as now they need to absorb all the infrastructure needs and then the computational needs. So the, this is where like you Nairavata know, comes in and like try to normalize all the common things like you know, which comes works across all these gateways and then we look at them as the common uh, things from user management to job management, workflow, complicated di directed acyclic graph or like you know, this, and then like managing data resulting from it and like uh, keeping track of the provenance from the all the way from Going from observations to simulation, like you know, going through the full uh, data life cycle, and um, at the same time, like you know, monitoring and keep tracking of, especially most of the the resources, especially we looked at in the previously in the exceed slide, they're all uh, shared machines, like you know, and typically batch uh, uh, going through a batch queue, shared across lots of users. So how do we uh, submit job and manage them across all of them? So. Airavata, like you know, is kind of this common layer, like you know, which the gateways use to manage all these infrastructure issues, and then so that now the gateways, uh, the the, uh, the investigators who are setting up the gateways now can focus on like an abstracting or translating the science problem into this, and Airavata takes care of the nitty-gritty details of here is my job description submitted. If it's a map reduce, do this. If it's an MPI, do this. We move, move data to like you know, in conceptually speaking, like you know. If it's an Amazon, move via S3, your storage. If it's on a HPC machine, a grid FTP, a high performance file transfer protocol is your uh, mechanism. Abstract all that kind of a details. So that's kind of the Airavata, like, you know, in general, has been helping each of these gateways, like, you know, do this. And then some of the gateways, like Cypress, like, you know, serve 10,000 users, like, you know, 
um, with the user base, like you know, with the high high usage. So now each of these gateways, even though like you know, there is a first step, like you know, we saw we address that challenge by providing this common set of middleware, and then uh, obviously Airauta being an Apache project come with all the openness, open community, all the gateways are not getting logged into. They come and contribute back, um, get meritocratically voted into the project manage committee, and all of that is great. But like you know, we started. We wanted to look at like you know, uh, as a different National Science Foundation project called Science Gateway Platform as a Service. Now, how can we create this platform like so that each gateway, again like you know, even maintaining Airavata and scaling with their users, and um, especially when like in a scientific community comes on board, they do not have a good sense of if there is a community interest to my code or not. They they are like working on their favorite molecular dynamics code, and then. They think that like their community will be interested, but you're not not sure. So you want to quickly put out something there and see how community, and then like you know, they all of a sudden sometimes scale like go back, some like you know diminish, or like eventually die down and so on. So managing this infrastructure is too much for them, and managing creating this elasticity. So what like our, our vision to use Airavata is in this project is how can we create this scalable, load balanced, and uh, and mainly like you know a performance oriented infrastructure and then here like you know the and then there are some tricky problems on the load balancing and fault tolerance here because the state itself is not about like these not a simple web servers these gateways are not simple web web portals like they are enabling computation too and the computation itself is running outside the airavata like somewhere on a grid or a cloud resource now the state is like you know within the application within the resource so and then airavata is kind of brokering all of that so the service itself goes down, and if scientists launched a, a two-month simulation or a two-weeks-long simulation, you don't want to like you know, lose track of it. You don't want you want the systems to come back up and pick it from where it left off, resume the state, and then convey it back and help the scientists connect through it and so on. So all of this like you know, provide different challenges, and then keep looking at it. We'll discuss some more like you know, on the data aspects, but. This is kind of the key thing, like you know, what we've been looking at, like the architectural help, like you know, where we could leverage from other uh, Apache projects and and so on. So, again, um, I've been hand waving a lot, like you know, on a lot of what Airavata is and like superficially, but like you know, you can look at hopefully a little bit, like you know, not so much in depth, but there are a few talks like where Airavata can uh, will be mentioned or like you know, you might get a little more glimpse. But especially not the first and third one, like you know, which are more about the community aspects of it, like more even more uh, high-level vague, like you know, generally speaking about the incubation or the Google Summer of Code. But uh, we encourage you to <coughs> catch uh, some of this as well. So again, like you know, looking a little bit deeper into the what we've been looking at, like how the science gateways are working. So if we look at the Airavata again, like a little bit of cartoonish diagram, but kind of illustrate the concepts uh, at a high level. So there are various science gateways, like you know, uh, the gateways themselves have their users interacting, and now like you know, the Airavata is providing a middleware need for these gateways, be kind of bridging uh, these uh, gateway portals with the computational resources. And then like you know, um, the users connect through an API, like you know, uh, and uh, abstracting out not to worry about a gateway wants to say, I want to run an experiment, and the experiment may be a simple application, it may be a very long-running one, or it may be a big computational workflow with a lot of interconnected components and so on. And then, um, uh, and then there's a like you no know, once you take that uh, through the API, and then internally the orchestrator is a component like you know, we've been trying to work through uh, towards this direction of this fault tolerance and scalability, where like you know just get the request in put them and then process them in your registry and send them request back so that the systems comes back or all the uh, systems goes up and down or system need to scale or load balance that will happen at that orchestration level uh, and precisely basically at that at that level like you know what we are planning to do is routing this request based on if it's a simple application directly send it to an application factory and there are some uh, prerequisite steps like you know which I didn't go through like you know what it takes to come from a simple uh, a command line driven scientific application to make it into a web service automatically. There is this application factory uh, component of the Airavata like provides that. Like you know, uh, take an application, describe it, like you know, inputs, outputs, and it, basically it's interface, like you know, how user interacts with it, and then and then like specify its deployment. Like you know, um, this application, like you know, a Gaussian model is deployed, uh, is built over MPI, and then using 
uh, a certain set of MPI uh, drivers and on a particular machine. And then the second mode, it's using a GPU one, and then here, um, and then here's its deployment, and here's how you run it. And at the same time, go towards the other direction of uh, maybe this may be a MapReduce kind of a job. It may be a different kind of a pattern, basically, uh, open MP, a shared memory approach to it, so and so on. So basically what, in short, the application factory there is doing is separate out the application interface aspect, which is actual deployment and uh, uh, programming pattern, because like um, what scientists or this modelers interact with this it's interface, the interface being Here's my input, like you know, take small flow dynamics input, run through the your engine, like here is my physics parameters, here is my um, it's, it's a weather code, like you know, here is my big assimilation data. Now I only specified radar data, tomorrow I'll specify radar, satellite, plus locus observation. So, uh, so uh, you mean? Within Airavata, you mean? Yeah, so that's a very good point. So again, like, you know, a little bit of history, like, you know, uh, when we are, like, you know, designing all of this, like, you know, Airavata, like, you know, came from a, a big, uh, in a, a extreme computing lab from Indian University there, where 15 PhD students, it was kind of an outcome of 15 PhD students putting in 15 components on their research, how to do this, for instance, like some of the things what you're mentioning. How to do these complicated workflows, like, you know, where, and keep separate out the business logic from the execution, and then, uh, like, try to take a look at this, like, you know, in a different sense. High level representation of the orchestration component, and then the actual enactment of it, and then like, you know, how, is, how it gets binded to various tasks within a graph, and then it could be, and it kind of went through a layers one. But like, you know, as of now, if we look at Airavata, like, you know, where it kind of uh, the high performance computing usage dominates. So, but the, so there are like two levels of like orchestration, like to your question, like if I'm interpreting it correctly. One is, the applications themselves are heterogeneous and there are different patterns. And then the graph itself is kind of composed of like, you know, various uh, different logics and this orchestration tries to absorb that. So I'm trying to like, you know, again, uh, like uh, in, in detail if you, if to answer your question, basically what it gets translated is from a higher level description to lower level binding at a near run, a near run time. So higher level, like, you know, you have these various tasks, you specify them. And then, like later on, you bind that to a particular application. Then later on, you bind that to a particular resource and to a data. When this is happening, this orchestration can uh, accommodate like you know, various execution patterns here. So, if someone wants to come and try another uh, study about this, you have to think about this situation? No, oh, hopefully not. That's not the. So, there are like, you know, also like, you know, before I answer that, like, you know, what kind of a service, like, can you quote an example, like, you know, what you're Yeah, so that, that's a very good point. Yeah, that's right. So basically, there are like, you know, here we are uh, on the website, I hope, like, you know, we have that slide. But basically, we have like that constitutes adding a core capability to Airavata layer itself. And then, like, you know, we, um, it's not there, but the core constant, like, you know, if you, and actually, if you look at the core develop portion here, there, that, that involves some core development. Like, you, know, you add a plugin. So by the, uh, Airavata provides this, uh, it uses a chain of responsibility patterns, like using a handler architecture. So it's easy to plug in, but, but you're right. It requires some configuration. If you require to educate the orchestrator, now I have a different kind of an application you can configure, and this is how it, what it takes. Uh, this is what, like, you know, actually, the various actual mechanics on how to work through that, like, you know, let's say from going from MPI to MapReduce is added to a layer called GFAC, but orchestrators need to be aware of that. Now I need to invoke that kind of a uh, mechanism. So there is, in a nutshell, like, you know, when you're adding core capabilities to Airavata, there is some changes happening, or at least hopefully most of them at configuration level, not so much at code level. That's been our effort a lot to not, like, previously, like, you know, where, like, you, know, you had to do code level changes. We are trying to more and more go towards how can we improvise this. All of these are the areas where we are taking a lot of architectural help. How can you do this configuration? And then, let's say that Airavata now supports both of them. And later on, now you bring a user want to take advantage at a runtime, just run this an MPI, run this MapReduce, that just becomes an input parameter. And then orchestrator doesn't have to change, it just becomes, it reacts to the inputs, basically. So, uh, the <coughs> 
Uh, no, no, pl please keep going. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so this is kind of like, you know, where we don't have today, like, you know, but like, you know, where we are trying to go down, go towards is trying to learn from the industry, like, you know, kind of like large scale deployment, how DevOps kind of scenarios work, like to address exactly the kind of the problems what you are doing, because especially because uh, when we are trying to integrate with this, like, you know, uh, heavily used projects like Cypress, there are 10,000 users doing the basic thing. They don't care and 10 users are kind of asking and for a capability, which is very nice to have, but you know you don't want to be ensured that it doesn't break the basic core thing. What is working? So how can we separate that out? Like you know maybe. Yeah, so that's kind of like you know we are. I mean you know there is, it could be done at the API level and partially done. Like you know we have what we came up with this new, um, of course leveraging back from all the old com decom world. Uh, we are trying to, each one we define them, previously they were called services, but we are kind of calling them CPIs. Uh, each one of them a component, they have their own component level interfaces, and there's an API level interface. So in that case, API level interface may be just saying, add this configuration to that. And then the component level interface might have to change in certain things. So how can we abstract there, like, no, that's kind of the approach we've been trying to take. Yeah, but actually, all of these are like, you know, very good discussion points on, and then critical questions, actually. Uh, we try to look forward, like, you know, and then uh, we encourage, like, you know, we'll, I'll come back to uh, the architecture mailing list. If you can ask a question like this, sometimes, like, you know, these questions make us think. Maybe we are not thinking in that direction. So this is kind of the exactly, like, you know, what we've been looking from the Apache community, like, you know, to help us out, too. Yeah. So, but um, anyway, like, you know, I'm, those are good ones. And actually, like, you know, if we uh, will have time in the end, like, you know, we can go back, like, more detail and then, like, brainstorm more. So on, on those lines, actually, this your questions like you know, nicely led into like, you know, some of these things, like, of the motivations of what we've been trying to go towards, which is try to relook at this architecture. As I was briefly saying, like, you know, this uh, architecture was built up in a legacy way. And actually, uh, there have been like, you know, more in a fictitious ways, but you know, not to uh, say it in a bragging way, but more like you know, it, it turned out bad. Like, you know, the project was proposed to be in meet the scientific needs. And then there was too much computer science going on. And like, you know, uh, Bill Gates was using this, like the older version of this in his keynote at right, a supercomputing conference and saying, look at an, uh, like a project like this, inventing like, you know, web services because we are being participating in a visual specs, Beeple spec, as opposed to serving the scientific community. So which is what we have been trying to move away. We, we, because our goal and mission is not towards be the technology leader, but to serve the scientists. And then, like, you know, so go towards, like, you know, to take all of these innovations and everything, like, move, too much moving uh, innovations happening on the technology and, uh, side, and then, like, you know, go towards uh, the scientific needs side. So how can we, like, combine all of those, like, you know, everything as a service, put everything as a web service, orchestrate all the services in a good way, now invent all of this web service monitoring, look at uh, XMPP, look, like, in all those kind of discussions that kept on, like, you know, moving us, like, you know, and then, that kept us away, also move away from our users like using this stuff. So that also also motivated us to come back to Apache on take this seriously on a releasable software, more like you know uh, more like you know controlled releases where the community is saying what they want and so on. So part of that direction is like you know is our look at let's combine all of them into functional demarcation of components. Like, you know, yeah, you have all these data management component combined with it, and then let's put a component, a CPI, a, a component level uh, interface, and abstract it out. Anything happens inside it, that development team is responsible, and then let's also cleanly separate out, like, you know, eventually, so that, that any small changes there doesn't propagate or cascade down the entire system, and so on. So, like, you know, the first step was, let's look at, all this, what is this high-level components, and then let's put up an API in front of all of this. And then, like, you know, we looked at Thrift, and, like, you know, initially, this was another, like, kind of a long-lived effort on, so was the SOAP the right thing? Was the REST API the right thing? Because, like, these gateways, like, keep emerging, and then uh, there are, like, some of these, like, you know, unique challenges, and then the, the talk at 2 o'clock, Chitri will be giving, will cover some of those, what more, why, why Thrift was attractive to solve our problem, but, um, uh, basically, what it helped is trying to create this, 
like you no know, you have now the api and then now like as looking at just as a simple registry is a small example here to look at this concept yeah let's abstract it out with a cpi layer like you know uh, some moving part, like orchestration is an example. Okay, if orchestrator will too many programming patterns comes, execution patterns, put up an orchestrator CPI, and then let the implementation level change a lot. And then like, you know, and then like in this case of ref, like, you know, you have the MySQL Derby layer and put an open JPA. And now with the CPI implementation and all of a sudden, like, you know, there is some discussion, we will go into more detail. Let's say the whole point is to create this hierarchical abstraction so that now you put a NoSQL approach or anything based on this pattern, the entire system or the users don't get uh, disrupted, but it gets adopted at a component level, is what we've been looking at it. And then there's a lot more uh, work to be done here, but as an example, we've been looking at what's going wrong here. Like, you know, we need to like, you know, add these details, and then this was, we were going through this uh, development fiction of this APIs are changing, CPIs are changing, we really need to stabilize them, but like, you know, until we get, get them right, until we get lots of more use cases and more usage of them, we'll not know, like, you know, how to do it right. So let's look at a current snapshot of the registry again, like, you know, not much to take away from here, but, but the idea was trying to illustrate um, and uh, what led to an architecture discussion here on, like, you know, take a look at the current registry. And then, like, you know, what we wanted was, okay, when we divided this all architecture into uh, APIs and CPIs, yeah, like, you know, uh, move all of that, like, and we wanted to use strip generated data models. So how the, uh, the inputs are configured, how the data is specified, and so on. The ideal case was we give it to a registry, and then the registry shreds that and puts that into our RDBMS and so on. But it, it, like, you know, that's kind of the ideal goal. But in reality, what happens is, there needs to be a lot of like you know work done to marshal be marshal them like you know and then come on, coming up with this open gpa like you know conversion layer before you put the database like you know what so that they are searchable and so on so basically there again like you know the takeaway here was like you know there is sometimes like you know we start out thinking like you know making these ideal things like you know this is what we want and then you plan the rest of the system and then when you go into the de like you know actual development it delays a lot because there are a lot more details we don't get into so the basic um, the fiction was in this in this case was if it's a operational usage friction for instance like you know, I have so many data queries I have so much of uh, request coming in per second and so on like you know the decision becomes easier like you know oh yeah NoSQL is good for this like you know, MongoDB is good for this Cassandra is good for this MySQL you have too much structured data relational databases are good but the main friction what we've been trying to go towards is engaging with the user community like which is the gateways I want API, and then the API keeps emerging, and we want to normalize at some point, but we are waiting to get our 1.0 version until like, you know, we at least know the way approach we are taking was, let's identify patterns. Like, you know, we have, if you want to serve like, you know, this trends of gateways, like we are coming from various scientific disciplines, there are like, you know, different ways they use them. Like, you know, the, a, a biologist thinks differently from a weather scientist, like, you know, a gene sequencing problem is different from a, a weather prediction problem, but like, you know, if this infrastructure is uh, absorbing all of those details, we need to at least like, you know, wait until like a few set of patterns emerge and then normalize them and then like, you know, stabilize the API. But during this process, the only way to get it right is to build a lot of proof of concept. So a lot of proof of concept is like, you know, changing a lot of API level, which is uh, changing a lot of data models. And then like, you know, there's too much development going on. Uh, and then we are trying to figure it out. Are there anything like you know anything like we can just change the thrift data model object and then come up with a registry implementation, uh, which will absorb all of this. And uh, just like as a quick uh, look, like and if you look, yeah, can we use something like this, like based on what we hear? Uh, oh yeah, there is Cassandra, like you know, and then there is like any of the Cassandra drivers you use. But there is this a GitHub project called ZombieDB, which takes thrift data models and puts them into Cassandra. And then you don't have to do anything, literally, like, you know, uh, it directly takes a thrift data model and, and then translates that. Like, you know, that's just a, a simple project uh, contributed from a Google research team. Um, uh, actually, like, I don't know if it's Google research, but, like, uh, the developer happens to work in Google research. Uh, but uh, so we wanted to look at that. And then, like, you know, before, like, this what, like, you know, with limited um, development time, like, you know, this is where, like, you know, we wanted to uh, say, oh, yeah, go uh, start, use this architecture list and say, 
Oh, what do you guys think about this? We have your problem, like, you know, let's look at this. Like, you know, what do you guys think of this approach? So here, like, you know, we are getting all this, like, you know, uh, contributions from all the, the, uh, the contributors, like, you know, we are saying, like, you know, who are not so much interested in following the rate of development, but, like, uh, really get uh, motivated to look at this kind of architectural issues, and also mainly from contributing the projects and so on, uh, that, like, you know, and then go towards, like, again, those of you who follow college football, like, you know, know this. And um, I, I'm an OU Sooner fan, but Marlon put this slide, like, La Licorso uses a lot, uh, not so fast for my friend. Like, you know, this kind of an example. Like, you know, you looked at this slide, and then the architect, I think this is a good summary of Marlon summarized of the big, long, uh, a big thread on the architecture list, which went on for a long time. But the key thing was, lots of uh, members, like, you know, uh, like, like this kind of controversial topic sometimes uh, evokes interest from a lot of them. And uh, sometimes there are like you know vigorous opinions uh, for a good reason. Some are really have religious opinions. Some some of them, but the, but the key thing we took away from this was an approach how to really decide this, make these kind of decisions. Like you know here like you know not focusing on the technical aspects of the registry, but what we are trying to see this and I wrote as an example is how can we use like you know the projects like who are not development, who are not do but who are not uh, thinking about IRAUTA for a full time, but still like, you know, are contributing these decisions. How can we explain to them? And then this led to this kind of like, you know, key questions raised, like, you know, is your data too big? Is your, uh, some of, like some of the questions you've been asking, like, you know, but in a more uh, detailed way. And then that led to a, yeah, like, you know, we have so many opinions, let's have a Google Hangout. And then like, you know, we had like 16 of them subscribe, like, in group debate uh, for two hours long, and then to determine that, you're looking at a wrong problem. Like, you know, first, like, you know, look at, like, you know, what, what is that? What is the key bottleneck? And so on. And then, actually, it happens to be the, the GSOC volunteer who was introducing the talk, like, you know, such as, like, volunteered to do a Google Summer of Code project on some of them. Like, basically, the, the main thing which we took away was the uh, registry for its legacy nature and like with all these use cases emerged over time, got like, you know, used in various things. It's cataloging all the way from this application description, from workflow description, like, you know, uh, cataloging all the data coming from these results, from these uh, executions, um, managing metadata and so on. Like, first step is first separate them out cleanly. Then, like, you know, divide and conquer the problem, like, you know, and then what's a good way. And then, like, you know, this kind of uh, way, like, um, uh, and then, like, you know, once you make that, we can look at it again. Um, um, again, uh, this, this <coughs> going on to a different uh, problem, but that, that was an example. And here is a different example, like, you know, taking, uh, happening in the architecture mailing list similarly. Yeah, you have uh, all this fault tolerance problem you need to solve. It's not about a fault tolerance problem because there's a distributed system. It's, yeah, you can solve fault tolerance of a distributed system in some level, but more importantly, it distributed in vertically and horizontally too, uh, literally. Uh, so, you mean in the, in the science domain space as well as in the technology domain, and as well as like interacting with various computational resources, which are very diverse by themselves. Like, you know, how do you manage jobs and resurrect job, and where the state resides, and so on. Uh, so, how do how do you and then like you know, how does orchestration happens so all of this layer? So. This led to some things like, you know, some suggestions on, like, first, how to approach this. Like, you know, first, really, like, you know, go through all the operations in um, uh, Airavata and then, like, you know, identify the item patent ones, like, you know, at the, at the operation level, at the data level, and then, like, you know, come up with really you know, the sequence diagram. Then we'll be able to look at it and go on. So some of them will be, like, you know, you might ask, like, you know, why were you not doing in the first place? Like, as with any other Apache project, these discussions emerge, and then this go on, the focus goes on. So, but, like, you know, what this architectural discussions are helping is take a particular topic, lead it to a certain extent, like, you know, come up with a design, and then take it back to the dev, the dev list to uh, implement the design. And then, like, you know, again, you know, I'm repeating the myself here, but, like, you know, all of these people, like, you know, are, not the people who are doing the development or design or associated with the projects, like providing it. And another example was when we um, jumped down into the thrift route and then coming up with this component level, CPIs, APIs, and so on. Like, you know, as Marlon nicely called it, like, you know, here a telescopic, uh, telescoping IRA. When to scale in, scale out. When do you want to stuff how many components in one JVM? When do you want to spread them out? Um, how do you decide this? How do you, like, you know, is there an academic exercise to do that? Like, is it, like, you know, learnings from the 
a lot of uh, analysis and analytics on the uh, production operation versions like you know, and then when do you want to create a separate thrift service when do you want to keep them like you know directly keep it a java interface and just call it out so all of those some of those discussions was like you know uh, like you know how, how do we go into them like you know, and then that was an example and like you know another example in the same direction is like you know the the, uh, the architecture list like you know from their observation they were saying like you know the current stakeholders are not like you know comprehensive enough you know, like maybe like you know you need a little more uh, you, and then like you know the scientific community like you know for good reasons and I like that aspect that it's been slow in adopting cloud computing and not really jumping onto the bus but like slowly growing carefully observing and then like you know keeping keeping that aspect but at the same time like you know there are a lot of all these disruptive technologies like you know bring in a lot of opportunities as well so how can you bring in slowly look into that and then um, how how can you uh, and where does iravata fit into this stack like you know, what are the components like an you know, iravata need to throw out like you know for instance i was uh, putting out an um, early diagram a messaging system component when we were looking at a messaging component, it resulted in four or uh, five academic papers looking at scalable messaging, reliable messaging. Uh, it was a state-of-the-art messaging back then, like processing billion messages a day. Oh wow, like you know, like that. Like you know, Airavata has this need, so we need to develop. Not so. Uh, it's it's not true now. Now we have like Kafka like thing, which processes billions a second, a second and so on. So it's not our interest in the case of Airavata. Like you know, we are interested in serving the science and keep our focus there. How can we plug and replace all of this? So how can we catch up? But that's too much consume, like you know. And just this is a slide uh, contributed. Uh, I think the, uh, the contribution line got cut, but uh, but basically this is a slight contribution from Professor Jeffrey Fox's team at, at IU, and then like one of the author uh, Supun happens to be around in the conference. If you want to uh, catch up with him on some of the overwhelming details here, but the idea is like you know uh, they've been doing a survey and trying to like you know really like you know look at all the big data stack and categorizing them into various layers with an interest of how can we take them in the high performance computing and how can we take them in the scientific computing world like you know what how can we we can draw parallels to many of the problems uh, from from various use cases been looking at where do we look like you know right now like you know we just have iravata on the top layer like you know the uh, orchestration which is Take the scientific problem and then figuring out use one or more of these technologies and then uh, produce the result and uh, give back. But like you know, as you can imagine, like you know, uh, the project itself doesn't have so many active contributors to achieve this or anything. So this is where like you know we've been uh, actually the main key goal of this talk and our uh, outreach within the architecture mailing list is uh, we can take a lot of help here. We can take a lot of advices here, and this is not our primary interest uh, or like to keep running behind the technology but like you know to solve some problems so how can we like look at like for instance like you know, right away like you know we've been looking at um, some of the important problems like you know like messaging system as I was already mentioning and then we are building this platform as a service like you know we heard about stratos like you know cloud foundry and all uh, what, what are the other projects like you know which can give all of that for free like you know where like you know, we focus on the Ira with a component making them multi tenant or not so much on like you know scaling on on different uh, infrastructure as services and then workflow orchestration too like you know we've been doing workflow research a lot if you google scientific workflows uh, like you know the lab web page used to come like right in the first second hit because we've been really like you know exploring and working with IBM research to into coming up with people spec I know people is not good too complicated look at something else like that but even workflow and all of this, there's a lot of things we can derive and use from now, uh, lots of this from the uh, Apache Hadoop side of the world and so on. So how can we build this Apache HPC stack? And then, and then there are a lot more things like, you know, what we heard, we haven't heard of and we don't even know, which like, you know, we, we already see that a lot on the mailing list. And did you look at this? Like, did you, why didn't you use Zookeeper for this? Like, you know, why are you doing this anymore? Like, you know, and this kind of things. So this is where like, you know, we really uh, will appreciate um, Engagement from uh, some of you and like and others and from your friends and colleagues you can uh, bring and direct them our way um, And so we highly encourage you to look at the mailing list and help the project and then uh, No question is a bad question because some things like you know Some questions like many of the times like in the many events as with any other projects like you know The biggest thing is you keep complaining about the project and asking the right questions like you know help the project and the members think a lot and address that 
and the mailing list and all. So that with that, and uh, I'll be happy to talk about more um, offline or in parts of all other talks on more about the technical aspects as well. But we have the main takeaway what we wanted to focus on, like you know, where we can take some of this like you know, technical help and architectural help here. Stop here with take questions and comments. Yes. Fully agreed, and that's kind of like the image, like you know, we try to solve too, like you know, means yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. But like you know, here, like you know, again, uh, I would say like probably we can like you know, quote back some of those bad practices in our project too, um, along with many others. But what we've been trying to focus on, or all what we've been asking help is not at all with the tool or anything. It's not we are looking at how can you integrate Zookeeper to Airavata. It's more like we have a problem. <laughs> What is the problem? Can you break down the problem? And what are the tools like which help you solve that? And sometimes like you know, and then like just, but don't get locked down into one thing. And that's where we look at a tool more as is it worth like you no? Know, for instance, like you no know, thrift. Like you no, know, we've been engaged right now. Like you no, know, it's uh, initially we wanted to look at it as a plug and play. Later we decided even defining the models in it. Maybe like you no, know, we get locking into it, but it should be a good reason. So yeah, exactly like that's where like you no, know, we really need help. Like to look at the problems and not the tools. And please join the list and keep reminding us, why are you looking again at the tools? Like, you know, what's your problem you're solving here? <laughs> <laughs>